I think we're live. Yeah, we're live. Ba -ba -ba -da. I'm not on camera today. I'm tired. I'm a long day. I'm sitting here, John M. Oates, my dad. You're just going to so welcome. Welcome to the show. All right. Have I seen Dune yet? No, I have not seen Dune. I, I, I'm basically boycotting anything new out now, especially if it's something I like. Mostly because I'm sick and tired of having my childhood ruined. But it's good to see all you guys here. Thanks for the wait. Hope I didn't leave you waiting for too long. Mostly because I'm sick How and tired of my childhood ruined. But audio levels going. <laughs> Welcome to the best show. Thank you very much. Hope I didn't leave you waiting for too long. And yes, the Discord is still a thing. Show. There Thank it is. And yet so, topic today, we'll get into that to a second here. It's that men are our own worst enemies. We're going to ruin everything, and I'll get into that. There's going to be a ton to go on it. So there's, first off, there's going to be a little bit of talk about the schism between the red pill and the married red pill. I figure that'll be kind of cool. Also be on why we don't work so well in like mainstream media social media you know the, the if you guys don't know we were the red pill was essentially quarantined on reddit which is basically a way of like kicking us off but doing it in like an algorithmic way so you don't actually have to take the uh, initiative to it so it's good uh on top of that it's gonna be about schisms and all this we need to collaborate stuff which i think is going to be kind of interesting you guys are going to see that and then, depending on how much time we have, I'll just go over just general guy things. Like, thirst is the worst. I'm going to call that one, thirst is the worst. You're going to love that, because it's going to show you that guys just aren't women. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed yourself. And, I'll get started. So, the red pill and the married red pill. You're going to get a little bit of a history lesson here. If you don't know about uh, the red pill history, there's a great book. A great book by Ian Ironwood called manosphere with an exclamation mark it's out on amazon right now you can't miss it it's got like a 1950s sketch of a dude putting a, a beaker into a bunsen burner or something like that anyways you can't wreck can't miss it so it's kind of neat he goes through the original like usenet if you guys don't know what usenet is that's like internet before the internet so if you don't know what a gopher site is then yeah you don't know this one either and guys used to sit on there talking about sex talking about relationships it's generally swapping notes because that's all you could do because it's literally just like it's like the equivalent of like a communal email this was around the time that mystery and tyler durden who i'm pretty sure is osd fat ass right now they were kind of doing their thing and then the internet started getting a bit better the late 90s happened early 2000s and that's when the pickup scene kind of blew up not so much worried about the pickup stuff, but here's what happened afterwards. So you get two general schisms of people. The first one were the ones that kind of got disillusioned. They got they weirded out because, oh my God, I can't believe that, uh, I can't believe that this picking up women thing is just, you know, it's rote, it's mundane. Every girl's generally the same. They get really disheartened. And they ended up with something called uh, purearchy. Now, if you don't know what purearchy is, that's okay because it's essentially MGTOW 1.0. It was a bunch of guys going, you know what? All girls are basically the same. I'm kind of disillusioned with uh, with uh, all this. So, oh yeah, there was something I was going to add. There she is. We'll get some visual stuff for you guys to look at the screen. We're going to go full mids watching this one. So they got disillusioned with it. They're like, I'm done. No more whamming. They kind of literally they go their own way. Like they still sleep around, but they generally just try to find purpose outside of that. And kind of culminated uh rollo has it in an article i can't remember the name of it but he references an article called bros before homes a play on uh, bros before hoes right oh i can imagine dante it's hard anyway so yeah so guys were earning like hundred twenty thousand a year pharmacist great job still living with their parents just traveling sleeping around don't really care and girls were mad because guys weren't stepping up now to be fair you take that average pickup guy, let's say 50 notches. 
average pickup guy. If he can't find one girl that invests in him in 50 notches, there is either a serious defect in him or a serious defect in women. Now, I'm not going to speculate on that. Just, I just know it got there. So the second tier were guys, and I would put myself in this group. Second group of guys, they did pick up. It was fun. And then like every guy, you get older, your priorities change. Like when you're 18, all you want to do is get laid, and that's great. And then maybe you're 25, you got your career started, you kind of want to focus on your job for a bit. Maybe you end up getting a girlfriend. You know, the one you sleep with 50 girls, and then the one that doesn't act like any of them and actually acts invested like she gives a shit. And you're like, you know what? Yeah, let's give it a try. Sure, why not? Hey, what's going on, JJ? It's good to see you, man. Yeah, don't worry, Pterodactyl. This is going to be valuable. You'll like it. Uh, so then they find, oh, okay, so we're going to do this. And then relationships are, are kind of hard when you, because everybody just kind of put aside the blue pill thing, go back to your own life. It's great. Jeez, these things are kind of hard. And so when in doubt, you go with what you know. And so these guys that were on like Usenet forums in the early mid 90s are now sitting here on, you know, so Swap's a great example. Reddit was another example. Well, I'll just take what I worked back then, swapping notes with guys about sleeping with girls, and I'll take swapping with notes about guys about dealing with your harpy nagging wifey girlfriend. <laughs> so that part's well enough. You know what? I'm gonna do some adjustments on this thing here. I like how it's live. I can kind of play with this as we go. Put you here. And we're gonna short you down just a touch. There we go. A little more organized for those that the mids watch thing isn't your cup of tea. Oh, Paul, glad to hear about it, man. Feel free, throw it up in the chat. I'll read it even if I don't comment on it. So then they found out a lot of the uh, stuff you learned from pickup is essentially the same things that work when uh, when you're doing relationships. Oh my God, it turns out that attractive stuff that attracted her when I was wearing a top hat and aviator shades and peacocking and negging and whatever, still works as a girlfriend thing you just got to kind of make the two a little more sophisticated and and this is the key point and this is what made it red pill realize that it's not just like a set it's not a seven to ten hour set it's not a single night it's like a 24 7 thing it's like oh okay so that's finally fake it till you make it it gets understood oh i get it so by now i should make it and so then guys make effort to make it and then that becomes the red pill it was because of a guy called hawaiian libertarian had a blog keone galt if i'm pronouncing that right i'm not the best at hawaiian you guys it's still up there now it's in 2000 and i want to say eight and he calls it game is red pill it's uh, just a wonderful piece and i've referenced it i haven't referenced it in a while but this is the internet so if i don't then people are going to forget all about it <laughs> oh all right, taking a quick pause on this one. Paul has hit his heels over head for Rose moment. That's chapter two in the book, by the way. Yeah, Paul. Uh, congratulations, man. Some girl decided her husband wasn't good enough and wanted some man mean grab Paul Murphy. And I'll tell you right now, Paul, you can never go back. Not saying you liked it, but I'll say right now you've seen female nature at its core. I'm not saying all women are like that. I'm saying like, Nothing they do now should surprise you because, I mean, she's clearly not worried about reputation. She's clearly not worried about fidelity or any of that stuff. All she was worried about is whatever feelings you were giving her. And now you got it. And you've probably learned more from that one girl than you have by 20 girls cheating on you or 19 girls cheating on you. Maybe not 20. I'd hope to think if you learned by 20. Anyways, game is red pill. I love this one. It's not actually in any of the sidebars. Nobody really talks about it because it's... But I think as a history artifact, it's kind of one of the more important things. It's Tuesday, September 15th, 2009. There we go. Oh, yeah. Different perspective from that. Dang. And so he goes... There's a Apparently, there was a bit of a fight in the blogosphere. That's what people used to do. They used to write blogs, and then they'd snipe off of each other with the blogs. And everything kind of cooled down between the pickup artists, the MGTOWs, the MRAs. If you always notice, it's funny. All these guys completely can't disagree on anything except for that they don't like Red Pill because Red Pill just kind of like accepts things for the way they are. 
and tries to navigate it. And he has this uh, flow chart. And he's kind of making, and this is where the reference to the matrix comes in. It's like the red pill, you know, see how deep the rabbit hole goes, this one there. And he goes, yeah, I think it's a perfectly fitting context to describe the social engineering by cultural indoctrination and conditioning that has been affected for the last century regarding gender roles and attitudes towards institutions like patriarchal nuclear families, the confusion engendered by the battle of the sexes and the legal system of sexual and social politics. It's really all best described as a mass delusion, an epidemic of blue pill addiction. Now that's a very, very fancy and a fittingly American way to describe it. It's since been um, kind of refined at that point. I would say guys like Whisper Human Sock Puppet, myself, Rule Zero Dad, a lot of the bigger names that you've probably never heard of, but owe a lot of what you know too. And they found it wasn't a cultural indoctrination. It's not a war room, a cabal of evil lizard people trying to train women to be good consumers and that. It's essentially technology. Like the Industrial Revolution was all downhill from any classic idea of what you think of as masculinity, that whole work hard and, you know, do your taxes and eat your weenies and you'll get yourself a good wife and you'll provide for your family. The Industrial Revolution changed it all with one simple tip or trick. It is the detachment of labor from productivity. Now, it didn't happen immediately and it didn't happen all at once, but we're at a point now where we're seeing it plain as day labor is detached from productivity because of oil oil creates the internal combustion engine one barrel of oil is equivalent of twenty thousand man hours worth of work so you can be a weak man and work stronger than twenty thousand men now what is this if not taking the classical male value system you know i'll work hard and provide for my family and protect them twenty thousand to one man is a commodity at this point we have no value. Bringing home the bacon? Yeah, that's great. She's got a job, you know, in an office somewhere. She can, bacon's $3 a pound. What else do you got? I'm here. Don't worry, I'm here. I'm tired. I'm tired and I don't want to be on camera today. Maybe I'll get dressed for, for rule zero. Apparently it is on right now. I think Paul's hosting this one, so. We'll see. I'll maybe take that break. He continues on, like, symptoms of blue pill delusions are ubiquitous. It manifests itself all over the place. Only a few red pill ta takers, those that understand, are even aware or just how widespread it is, get into consciousness. And this is where he's staying. And I mean, it's a bit of a fluff thing right here, but... Makes the case that, okay, once you see it, you never go back. And I love, he has a great example lower on in the thing. Where there was this... And if you guys remember, there was a character here for a while, a hot minute, called Dr. Dude Babe Love. Or Dr. Babe Dude Love. That's the one. Uh, she's since changed her name to Dr. Taylor Burroughs. She's some ex-Olympiad in the Cayman Islands. I think she's like in her 40s now. But just a mess. And it turns out like, I don't know what it is, man, about female doctors that talk about sex is that they're always stunted. They're always stunted. I'm not saying they're bad people. I'm saying they're stunted in like a, a normal way that a barista at Starbucks is able to handle. Like, if you're a thin, attractive Olympic athlete and you can't find a man in the 20 years of your adult life, then I got nothing for you. There's clearly something that you've done wrong or done wrong on purpose. I don't know. Oh, good. I'm looking forward to it. Like I said, I haven't talked to anybody yet who's taken Paul's uh, mindset course. So I would love, Pterodactyl, if you give me like a rundown on it, like on the Patreon or whatever. I figure we'll make it pretty honest. So that way, at least the guys in the group can know. Like I said, I have faith in Paul. I know Paul's put a lot of work into it. I know Paul's switched on, but at the same time, I want to make sure that uh, the things do what they're do what they're delivered. Whatever. Anyway, so this Dr. Helen's blog thing, and I can't find it. It's gone in the annals of time. Get it? <laughs> and he was taught, and they were talking about a. Uh, what they call in practical female psychology a um what the hell's the word for it oh a double bind that's the one so they'll ask you a question and then any answer you give is the wrong answer and the example he uses is whenever a woman asks you what two paint colors you prefer you have to say you don't care the alternative is picking the wrong color and paying dearly for it blue pill induced paranoia he says fear of pairing of paying dearly for upsetting a woman 
Anyone that even has the rudimentary understanding of game knows exactly what you should do should a woman ask you to pick a color. Obviously, you just, you know, pick something, let her get mad, you can play around with it, whatever. Fun fact on this one, too. So, years later, I'll find this one for you, too. There was an article by another Red Pilled content creator in 2012, so three years later, called Threat Point. You guys are getting the total uh, conspiracy theory thing. Like, it's actually kind of neat when you go into this rabbit hole. So, Threat Point. And it turns out that this whole double bind decision and any choice you make will anger your woman and that's like untenable you can't make her angry turns out there's actually some legal force of law behind that so skip ahead three years later Dalrock is looking at a, a bunch of literature when it comes to divorce scenarios and it turns out there was a study done by what's his name where did he put the name of the damn thing Stevenson and Wolfers Two feminists, or gendered studies economic, economists, I believe it is. And they're talking about divorce reform, the, the feminist push to uh, change divorce. And they make the case that feminist or divorce reform is all about redistributing power from the husband who wants to honor the marriage vows to the wife who doesn't. They're very open about it. And they make the, the case that everybody always sees. It's like, oh, men are abusive woman beaters, and so we need to give women the power so put aside the woman beaters are still doing it they don't care about this stuff so they're going to do what they're going to do it's like that whole uh, make guns illegal and then only criminals have guns thing you make divorce super easy and the guys are going to do it anyway but the ones who don't which is the vast majority there is now a large window of groups of guys so think about it three segments abusive husbands wife leaves not abusive husbands wife is bored but comfortable. And then the third type, which is uh, not abusive husbands, wife likes it. She has fun, generally. I would say that's about 25% of marriages. And I'm, it's not, it's close, but that's not an accurate. So that group where the wife was comfortable, but not happy now, have just been given a great tool. The idea of unilateral divorce. So whoever wants out of the marriage has the, has the, uh, has the power to end the marriage. I think Rolo puts it himself there. It's the cardinal rule of relationships. Whoever wants in the least has the most power. And it's codified in law now. So here's the part that gets back to um, Hawaiian libertarians' point. So to see how laws affect the external threat point, note that prior to unilateral divorce, a partner wishing to dissolve the marriage could leave without their spouse's consent. However, in that situation, the legal divorce is not granted and the right to remarry is forfeited. So it was kind of one of those things. If your husband's really that bad, you're allowed to leave, but you can't get married again. So under this one, that threat is gone. A girl can leave, go get remarried, it's fine. And there's a bunch of legal ramifications of that. Now here's the point that uh, affects this. So the exit threat model predicts that changes in divorce regimes will have real effects. If the divorce threat is sufficiently credible, it may directly affect intrafamilial bargaining outcomes without ever being exercised. Intrafamilial bargaining outcomes. Right there. This is an intrafamilial bargaining outcome. Whenever you ask your women which of two paint colors you prefer, you have to say you don't care. The alternative is picking the wrong color and paying dearly for it. Now, it's a subconscious thing, and it's not the only factor. I've talked before about uh, the attachment attachment theory as to why guys are like this as well, but we're putting that aside for right now. We're just dealing with this from a legal perspective. So from a legal perspective, you can't fight with your wife because she'll leave you. You can't make her angry because she'll leave you. She has that Damocles sword over your head. Her feelings are now driving your behavior. And it's neat that even, even in 2008, <coughs> excuse me, 2008, 2009, he understood this. They didn't have like the articulation or the refinement to it, but it's, again, you're watching, you're watching cavemen making rocket ships here. Absolutely wonderful. Yeah, and my ex-wife used to put me in impossible verbal situations such as, do you think this supermodel is prettier than me? And this is back to that same article. And the wrong answer one is, yes. Oh, you don't think I'm pretty, you asshole. And the wrong answer two is just, you're a liar. Of course she is. And so he found himself avoiding talking to her at all. So it turns out, uh, and this comes from 
Manuel Smith's No More Mr. Nice Guy. Again, probably one of the more fundamental red-pilled uh, books out there. Where human beings, when they're put under a threat, have fight, flight, fight or flight response. Fight, flight, or freeze. They make the case that you should replace that with verbal, verbal assertiveness, which is a great thing. Because right here, that's what the guy did. He froze. I just avoid her. Run. Flight. So as much as you can say, this is just some stupid thing. It's a girl asking about a girl. What's the big deal? But you got to remember, for these kind of guys, and I'm sure you guys, to some extent, have been there or are there and trying to get out, and that's fine. It's seen in your limbic system as like a real threat. As much as it sounds stupid. Frontal lobe's like, dude, this is just a girl saying whatever. It's a supermodel. She's not going to leave you over it. But your limbic brain's like, screw that, man. The tiger's going to eat you. You better avoid this situation because you don't want to get her mad. And so Kawhi and Galt kind of laughs again, taking the blue pill, renders many men clueless to this stuff, and laughs. And he brings up a couple more comments. You know, one guy's like, oh, I think women do manipulate more. They cry. They feign being angry or hurt. They tell you stupid things like a man doing dishes is sexy or I'll be happy if you do this. And if you refuse, you don't want her to be not happy. You know, of course, women lie. Of course, you really believe that she had a headache for six solid months or somehow turned on by a man pushing a vacuum. And this is the part where it gets into like Michael's story. So you can see how like all this stuff is like a giant web and this is why I like it. And everybody's like, how do you know Red Pill is right? It's because everything fits. Like, there's not something that doesn't fit. These are spread apart for years. I'm basically reading these articles articles to you, like, one after another and dissecting them, putting them together. But these are spread by, like, a decade. And the guy's complaining. I'm a good guy. I don't cheat or do things I shouldn't do or go where I shouldn't go. I don't drink too much or any of that. I have nothing to hide. But I've learned the hard way that if I tell my wife the truth about certain things especially my feelings, if they're at all negative, then I'd better be prepared for two to three weeks of significant pain. Helen's right. I want to be a truthful person with my wife, but it just isn't worth the hassle, especially since she's made it so clear she really doesn't want to hear the truth. And no offense, but sometimes women are just plain scary. You hear that stuff? It's crazy. This is a guy who's henpecked. And yeah, that yeah, guy's such a beta male. Like, look, I don't know. If you're the, the, the young, single, 20-year-old guys in this one, that's fine. Just be aware. Where'd my thing go? Yeah, I want it back. We'll redo it again. Actually, you know what? Let me just... uh. Where's one of my other loops? Let's see what we can find in there. Ooh, I know which one we can use. I've got like 500 of these things, by the way. I just like the idea of us being able to keep, uh, keep, there we go. There, nice and chill. So there, for those of you that have the uh, ADHD or the OCD, but uh, we're kind of annoyed by all the vaporwave stuff. We're just gonna go with like a simple rain one. Henpecked husbands are by definition betas. No, and that's, okay, we're gonna, small distraction here. I really hate Vox Day. Vox Day has ruined everything. Oh, wait. That's what I forgot to do. I forgot to loop it. Loop. Vox Day and his stupid socio-sexual hierarchy has done more damage to the idea of what counts a sexual strategy. I, I, I want to say I'd want to punch him in the face, but, you know, I got too much melon. I don't think he'd like that. Oh, yeah, those drunken masters. The Wu-Tang turns out actually has a YouTube channel where they show off all these stuff, which is kind of funny. Anyways, <laughs> glad you prefer. Um, yeah, so he made an article where he tried to, like, treat guys like a botanist. And he said, alpha males are these guys that they're always the life of the party. They get the top tier women. He was basically treating it like uh, alpha was, a, was an archetype. The most popular guy in this social group. And then he says, the betas are the guys that brought beer. They're his best friend. They're the ones that get the sloppy seconds. And then he talked about delta males. He goes, when people say beta male, they think delta male. That's the guy that's boring. Nobody really likes him. He has to invest before he gets anything. And 
Then you talked about Sigma males. Sigma males are the guy who comes into the party. Nobody knows who he is. They didn't think much of him, but he's got a hot girl on his shoulder. Like, how'd that guy get there? And then Gamma males, which is, I mean, everybody knows Gamma. It's like a uh, narcissistic personality disorder mixed with social awkwardness. Which, and the Gamma one kind of works, but NPD would have been a much easier, you know, nomenclature. But here's the thing. So now everybody's sitting here talking about alpha male this and beta male that. And I'm just like, I f cannot stand it. Cannot stand it. The red-pilled way to understand alpha and beta. And yes, I get some of us, like, occasionally say beta male and alpha male. But it's like, at some point, you just stop fighting the tide. But you guys are smart. So I'm going to hook you up with the actual, actual understanding of it. Alpha is a container. And inside that container is everything that makes a woman sexually interested in you. That's being tall. That's being aloof. That's having game. Emotional engagement yeah blue pilled alpha i that's rolos i know rolo uses that one a lot i cannot stand that term either because it's just it only adds to the confusion anyways alpha anything that makes her attracted and hormonally it actually turns out there's like a way to measure these responses we don't do that but you can it's uh hormonally it it relates to dopamine testosterone yeah dopamine and testosterone and it's exciting and it's anxious. It turns out anxiety is like the, the primary, uh, anxiety and horniness are the primary emotions attached to alpha. Now beta, different container. It's like Slaughterhouse is saying here, beta is comfort. So beta is like you give your girl a big hug, um, anything and hormonally it's attached to, hormonally it's attached to serotonin and oxytocin. As much as people talk about pair bonding, as close as you're going to get to pair bonding is chemically addicted to those two hormones through those beta activities. That's as close as you're going to get to pair bonding. Yes, yes. What did I just say? Relationships are a drug addiction. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to the club. Now, on the other hand... Some things that people think are one are actually the other. Like case in point, giving a woman an orgasm. Everybody thinks, oh, that's alpha because you're sleeping together. Not true. Orgasm, a female orgasm is actually a uh, beta trait. What? It's true. Tons of studies out there. People have looked into it. When a girl orgasms, they get, you know, shots of oxytocin and serotonin. Turns out when girls talk about whether they want to keep a man as a plate or not, whether he satisfies her sexual is a big thing. So it's not that it makes her attracted, it makes her comfortable. It's one of those measures. And everybody's, everybody gets weirded out by that. But it's like, yeah. And it comes up because, you know, sometimes for guys who are trying to rekindle attraction in their relationship to work on their male action plans, one of the techniques they do is called Keiko cave, cave manning. And caveman is when your girl's not super sexually available. She's got too much of the beta traits and she's very comfortable, but she's not attracted. But you guys are having sex, and then it's just caveman, get yours, get out. Don't even care about hers. And that that selfishness to it, that lack of those comfort things, create a tinge of anxiety. So it turns out ignoring the female orgasm is somewhat of an alpha trait. Now, the reason I'm mentioning this is because for alpha traits and beta traits, they all have their place within a relationship. <laughs> Jack. Yeah, the mentality. I don't agree mentality is even a thing. But, I mean, we'll get to that one, J20. It carries the AllSpark. Well done, sir. Ryan is prime. Uh, what was I just saying? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Alpha is great. Makes a girl very attracted. Builds a lot of anxiety. And that's the thing. Anxiety. And people love anxiety. It's an aphrodisiac. It's one of the best aphrodisiacs. In fact, what is it? Nash Day Game. Absolutely hates it because I make the, the very basic obvious decision or uh, acknowledgement that anxiety is an attractive quality in men and he hates that i think he's got he's always big on like make the girl feel comfortable i'm a pickup artist I'm like come on man <laughs> get with the program but if all you have are those alpha qualities those alpha traits you never get past one night stands you'll sleep with a one night stand maybe you'll have like a real weird on again off again anxiety induced like uh fling with a girl there's that stuff yeah but 
you'll never you'll never have a girl for any length of time. Now maybe you don't care about that. You don't have to. Nobody said you had to. There we go. We're gonna sw we're, we're switching to the bars. Nobody said you had to care about that stuff, but for some guys, you actually do like the idea of at least op being open to it. Like yeah, I'd be open to having a girlfriend. So what do you do? You act with more of those comfortable traits. Make sure she orgasms every time. Uh, maybe you just go out to dinner. That's another reason why we say dinner dates are for chumps. It's not It's not an interview, it's a reward. You're basically leading with a beta behavior and then you're surprised that you don't get any sex out the other side, right? <laughs> My ex was the only one I didn't want to banish post not any tips. Well, she's your ex. What are you going to do at this point? It sounds like all the damage has been done by now. Just go on and live your life. It's all you really need to do. There we go. I just realized it looks kind of boring when the thing doesn't move at all. So now that you've gotten some history here, I guess we'll finish off. I'll finish off the Hawaiian Libertarian bit here. Because it'll give you guys, and I would suggest you give it a read on your own. Go read it later, and you're going to see. Now, and everybody talks about purity tests and red pill and no true Scotsman, all that shit. Come back to this. Because I would say, as far as any any red pilled, like, what's a litmus test? Like this. If you understand what this is doing, it looks like a mids watch live recording because I want it to. It's my channel. I'll make content the way I want. <laughs> Tell you what, second half of the thing, I'm feeling a little more up. You guys can get the, the full MLD John bathrobe experience. Um, he goes on to shit on the MRA. I get the impression there exists a commonly held notion against the MRA that ever since feminists got no-fault divorce, all women have taken to it with great gusto simply because they can. That the laws give women gold-digging powers and they take advantage of it simply because it appeals to women's greed and they would happily destroy the lives of their husbands and children to satiate it. Red Pill Guy's like, no, I beg to differ. There's more to it than that. Because if a man stands up for himself in today's climate, he could very well find himself put out of his own house, paying a substantial chunk of his paycheck to his ex-wife and seeing his kids when and if she decides to. He calls this the emasculation paradox. Emasculation paradox. I actually have a video on this on my channel from the relationship breakdowns, I believe. Or maybe it was a Red Pill Coffee. Masculation paradox. And that's the problem is that men think that the legal system is set up to give women all the power in a relationship, so they better give it to her to avoid upsetting her so she doesn't use it. But the problem is, and this is where he's like, and us goofy pickup artists, we all knew, is that the only way that she won't treat you like this is to stand up for yourself. The only way she can respect you, to admire you, to love you, to lust for you. Oh yeah, speaking of which, is that loop playing? I put, oh good, yell loop is on there. Well, see, an abolitionist, yeah, see, don't be silly. Don't be silly. Just hold masculine frame and family court. I got something for that. I got something for that, but that's a little off topic right now, but it's the better beta divorce guide. And that's more of like taking a tactical retreat. Act very submissive because the court doesn't give a shit about your amogging. We're talking about, we're not talking about hard power. We're talking about soft power. If you guys don't know, uh, anybody in the Canadian forces, probably the American armies too, or military, knows they explain this concept to you in your first leadership qualifications. It's the concept of hard power. The commander gives an order, you follow the order, or you become arrested, summary trial, that sort of stuff. There's physical force of law behind it. Other than him, nobody has hard power. Other than your commanding officer and then whoever's delegated his authority. But that's essentially him giving the order through somebody else. You don't have hard power. You have soft power. If you guys don't know what soft power is, when people talk about leadership, what they actually mean is soft power. And soft power is your ability to make somebody want to do what you want them to do. That's being persuasive. That's being attractive. Sometimes just being a guy that's so good or just good enough that she can rub her friend noses, her friend's nose in it. Well, at least my husband's not a fat fuck. There's mine there. He's playing squash, six-pack abs, whatever. 
he's more social. He handles dinner parties better. He he makes her look good when he goes to like a corporate event, all that kind of stuff. And this is this is kind of what gets back to my point when I was talking before about uh, commodities. It's that men are commoditized because of the industrial revolution. And now we're at the point where what do you do when a good becomes a commodity? Just look to look to the business world. Soybean, biggest commodity in the world. So what do they do? They brand it. They call it edamame. They put it in a fancy box. They put a nice bow on it. They have it work out three days a week. And then they charge 10 times as much as it's worth. Great quote from the last psychiatrist, also an awesome blogger. If you haven't had a chance, read some of his work. <laughs> GG. Uh, people will pay 10 times what something is worth for what it can do for them. People will pay 100 times what it's worth for what it says about you. And so this is kind of like the modern way of, uh, to get ahead with masculinity. So yeah, exactly. Women treat men as success objects. So in the, so think of the way that you would love it if you're dating a girl and she gets a fake set of guns tapped onto her. Get some fake titties. Awesome. Look at what I got, boys. Show it off. Here's a picture of her lighting my cigar beside my rented Lamborghini. Wow. What an alpha male. Good for him. Same with chicks. To be able to show you off at dinner parties... To have other girls ask because they want to live vicariously through her because their husband's a schlub. That's the kind of stuff that works now. Again, and that's the soft power. No girl wants to lose a top tier man. There's nothing more embarrassing from a social perspective as having a man who looks really good, acts really good, very attractive, very social, and then to have him leave you. It's a huge shot. So brand yourself like soybeans. Edamame. I can use a hundred examples. We can talk about purses if you really want. Something more masculine. Louis Vuitton is like a three to five thousand dollar purchase. And it's just a canvas canvas bag. Canvas bag with some logos on the front. You can make the case, well, coach purses are just as nice. It's got better storage. It's got better this, better that. Go to your girlfriend after this. And ask her if she wants, if she would rather have a $400 coach purse that's absolutely perfect for all of her needs, or if she wants the Louis Vuitton fucking never full. If you guys don't know, that's just a big grocery store bag. <laughs> just a big fucker. She'll take that hands down. Hands down. And then again, maybe you got a wealthier girl. There's the, oh, I can never remember the name. There's one that's even more expensive than that one that everybody loves. But watches, if you want a more relatable one, you can think of watches. You're going to go buy a fossil watch? Oh, yeah. Fossil watches are great. Tells the time. I like the look. It fits with my outfits. Well, let me get you an Omega Seamaster. Holy Jesus. You'll pay 10 times that for what it what it can do. It's handles going to space, for Christ's sake. But the guy who gets a Jacques Cartier $20,000 watch. Thank you, Birkin bags. $20,000 watch. It's like, holy crap. Why'd you buy that? It doesn't, do, it doesn't even tell time. It doesn't have a chronometer or anything. It's just... Yeah, don't worry about it, bro. See what I mean? 100 times what something is worth just for what it says about you. And that's marketing. Yeah, well, iPhone's different. iPhone is faux luxury. That would if you had to if you really want to follow this example, I would say it's uh the equivalent of pickup artists. Because iPhones make you feel like it's a scarce resource because Oh my God, there's not going to be enough. You better line up at the store to get your first copy. There's only a thousand. They can make as many as they want to. But by artificial scarcity, they kind of make you feel like it's a uh, luxury good. What it says about you. But it doesn't actually. Because everybody else has one. But, hey, if you want to go that route, go that route. Did I finish this? Oh, yeah, the standing up from yourself. So it's good. He goes into the emasculation paradox where he just shows that's what red pill is. You take this objectively bad situation on paper. You got a legal system that's designed to reward somebody for leaving you. In return, that ends up cooling off a lot of male behaviors because you don't want to anger the girl because it's there as a threat. And here's what you solve it with. Just game. Just game. He even references Rolo. Or, I mean, not Rolo. Royce premise for the game is what they call Mary Shag Kill. He quotes Royce on this one. You have to understand why women have this curdled reaction to betas deep down in their bones. If, and again, they use it the 
way that I said is not very red pill, but it's 10 years ago. Bear, bear with me. If a man spills his seed and the wrong woman, no biggie. He can still bang more women. If a woman gets her eggs polluted by a feeble seed of a man, she's stuck for nine months, probably 20 years. So yeah, girls would rather err on the side of Alpha. <laughs> and that's why there's so many cases of these women that feel justified and entitled into getting the most they can from a divorce settlement, even if she's the spouse that ended up breaking her marital vows. Contempt. Contempt. I talk about that in my article, Power Games. You take a, a for closed communication, open communication is just talking, sharing information like we're doing now. Closed communication is essentially subtext, status games, sussing out people in their hierarchy. And on one side, you've got harmony. Are we on the same team? Are we against each other? And then who's higher status or lower status? The problem is contempt comes from higher status and on the other team. So when somebody acts with contempt for you, just know. They're not on your side, you can't talk to them, and they think they're better than you. How you want to deal with that is a whole different conversation. But all these guys who are following this whole you can't alpha the state attitude, they're becoming submissive where they act lower status and on the same team, which is what engenders that uh, contempt. because so it ends up being a uh, stable interaction, if you've ever heard of that. So he does make a lot of cases where this is some New World Order stuff. I would argue it's just emergent strategy. Things happened because technology allowed them to happen. So there's your history of it. And now we're going to get to the schism between the red pill and the married red pill. Holy shit. What's he talking about? I thought red pill is red pill. Oh, it is. But people are people. <laughs> I like seeing you guys just talking about your watches. I feel bad because I got a Rado and two Omega Seamasters. Or a Seamaster and... Uh, oh, what was the other one? Oh, the James Bond Edition Seamaster. They're just sitting in a box right now. I like never wear them because they're too damned heavy. <laughs> so, the Red Pill and the Married Red Pill. Turns out the blogosphere was doing its thing around 2012, I want to say. The Red Pill joined... From PK Atheist, Robert Fisher created the site on there. He made his case, same as like uh, Keone Galt made, where it was just, guys have nowhere to go to talk about this stuff. Let's say you date a girl and she she cheats on you. So what does the pickup artist say? The pickup artist says, well, there's more women out there. Just go find another one, which isn't helpful because it doesn't really like, why did she cheat? Is there anything I could have done about it? Should I have noticed it? Why did I become in the mistake? She's like, it's not very helpful. And then he goes, you talk to the men's right side of it. It's like, women are trash, blah, blah, blah. And he goes, okay, that's not helpful either. It just puts the blame on them. And so he makes the case that this should be a place where you can just sit here and talk about strategy without the morality involved or without the, the demonizing other people. Obviously, you see how that went. Uh, a little while later, it turns out the best strategy if you're casually dating a girl is just to drop her like a, like a hot ticket. Just drop her. And next is what they called it. So here's the thing. Uh, this other guy, a Solos, he almost never posts. He kind of just made it. He's like the Swiss watch. I just Or like the God's watch thing. I made it. Let it do its thing. And he's like, that's not the great. Like, it's a good strategy if you're just some single guy in his 20s and you dated a girl and you're on date three and she pulls some stuff. Ditch. Not very helpful for a 43-year-old professional who's got three kids, a wife, a house. There's a huge logistical nightmare surrounding that. So he's like, I want to explore what happens between... The digression and the next. Yeah, real men wear watch. Boys don't understand this. I could wear the watch. Do you want me to put it on? Will that make you feel better about my status as man? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So he made the married red pill. And the first group of guys, there was like Athel K, Ian Ironwood, uh, Blue Pilled Professor... Yui McGill, Scort Zhang, a whole bunch of guys. Anyways. And that's when they started getting into, it's kind of like inner game. Like, the red pill always focused on external stuff. What are women doing? Damn these broads. How do we fix this? Some good stuff came out, like the bitch management guide, Uncle Vaz's corporate land series, the how to dominate girls, how to get laid like a warlord. Great stuff like that. Married red pill went a different direction. They went to the inner game. They went, okay, how do you fix... How, what is it that makes you 
Oh, that's funny. What is it that makes you so unattractive that people treat you like shit? And so the red pill kind of went with their sidebar, their codified you know, way of going things. They got first year Rolo. They got um, manipulated man. They got Michael's story. All this stuff showing that like the world's against you. There's no positive male resources. Wham and act like trash. Here's what you can do about it. It's great. Married red pill went another way. No more Mr. Nice Guy. Uh, when I say no, I feel guilty. They're like, the reason people treat you like shit is because you let them. Women treat you as shitty as you let them is the saying. Archwinger, another great one there. And so people kind of got that. So it was almost like a two-pronged approach. So for most, most of the part, everybody kind of agreed. Like, this stuff is good. This stuff is good. Take from what you want. And they're pursuing something in two different directions. And if it ends up, the different uh, field reports and theories and... Uh, resultant like information kind of converges in a certain area then it gives you more credibility it's called uh it's called convergent evidence i think it's convergent evidence yeah convergent evidence it makes these two very lackluster just some dudes sharing stories on the internet and it makes it a little more credible because everybody's kind of moving in the same direction from different areas i'm gonna have to learn more about seiko like i remember that from the 80s but i don't get you guys uh Ego's got in the way, though. So the guy who's running the Red Pill subreddit now is a guy called Red Pill School. I don't know his real name. The rumor is he's Robert Fisher's second account, but I don't know, whatever. I don't want to dox the guy. I'm not about to. But as far as I can tell, that's not the case. So he liked the idea that it's run by a benevolent dictator. He's like, whatever sub there is, I have to be the head mod, and that's fine. To which the Married Red Pill guys are like, fuck you. No, you can come. You can join. You can stick around, but... Like, we made this place. We're not giving it to you because you fucking think you're the man. So there's always been a bit of an attitude difference between the two. To date, I think I'm the only... There's only, like, me and Bob Sutton who was able to be a moderator on both of them. And Bob was mostly, like, a token moderator from the Married Red Pill. He didn't really contribute much. He just liked being in there. So if you guys don't remember, and here's a name you haven't heard in a while... And, like, egos flare up every now and again. Usually what happens is one guy from one of the subreddits who has flair, who's, like, a member of the community, goes in the other one and thinks that that, that, uh, that flair gives him credibility in the second space, which it doesn't. So it's essentially like watching some dude wave his dick in there and say, I got flair on a subreddit, and everybody's like, what the hell is your problem, you idiot? Nobody gives a shit about that. And so, yeah. Hunter Drew. You guys remember him? Goes by the name Zach Small now probably seen him on the internet he's the guy who shows off pictures of his family and it's like yeah look at my wife and my kids aren't they great you could be this too <laughs> the gals call me sharp i'll call you anything if you give me that watch give me that watch uh hunter drew went and had a post called i would do it again I could probably find it. I'm pretty sure I got a Mids Watch episode later on where Jack talks about flossing on it. It's actually pretty funny. And it turned into a whole thing where, like, don't get married. The Red Pill guys came in, started dick-waving to the married Red Pill guys. The married Red Pill guys started dick-waving with their whole married is game on hard mode. Oh, you shouldn't have gotten married. You're just a cuck. And it was always, it was just, like, much ado about nothing. But, yeah, nobody, everybody ended up, like, hating each other and shit like that, so couple things came out of the wash which was nice and i think a lot of people misunderstand the purpose of the married red pill within a married paradigm it's not that red pill is pro-marriage it absolutely is anti-marriage it's not good deal for men in any shape or form for the reasons that you guys should know this kind of intuitively but it's anti-divorce rape it's essentially that emasculation paradox i talked about before and it's taking that to its natural conclusion how do i maximize my soft power in a situation where I have less than no hard power. Seems kind of interesting, right? Yeah, it's totally interesting. So they never got along. And then there's the various players. A lot of them were just horrible. And this is how the ban happened. If you guys don't remember, Red Pill was doing great. Quarter of a million members. It was turning out to be a pretty big place. Uh, Reddit banned the incel sub. Turns out a sub full of incels is a very unattractive place. And they're like, this is giving us bad press. We have to block it. Worst decision they could have made because previously 
all the unattractive celibate men that wanted to shit on women all day, they had their sandboxed area. And now that they booted it, they spread out everywhere. And then every site that was even nominally attached to something about a man was full of like hobo incels. And everybody took a hit on that and it sucked. And so Reddit kind of realized, okay, if we ban them, we're just sending them everywhere else and shooting up everybody's subs. The moderators had like a general revolt over this. Like, why did you do that? So then they came up with the idea of quarantine. Now, here's the funny thing. They eventually got rid of MGTOW as well, too, because, oh, it's just full of incels. It's like, yeah, because you put them there. And then all that was left was Red Pill. All of them were going to Red Pill. And this is kind of when Red Pill took a dive, because even though they had, we had heavy-handed moderation, like the slightest infraction was just ban now, ask questions later. Ask questions later. Eventually, what'll happen is they'll come into mod mail if they don't want to get banned and they'll come in one of two ways one they'll emote like a child in which case you know all right ban's good keep it going other times they go in maybe it's an apology maybe it's they didn't understand like as long as they come at you like a reasonable adult you're like all right fine here you go get them back in there it, i'll tell you right now 99.100 percent of the time nobody ever came in there like an adult so every ban was justified every single one even with like a dozen moderators blocking and banning people left right and center they just couldn't keep up there was too many incels too many incels and so at the the situation known as eternal september took over and i guess even with all the protections in the way that to prevent like brigading and all the other like stuff there oh yeah i've been banned from a lot of those ones sometimes i don't even most of the time i don't even post them relationships dead bedrooms hate me 2x chromosomes off my chest they all hate me. I'm fine with that. Yeah, an avalanche. Yeah, what is the multiple of an incel? I would call it a murder of incels. <laughs> Coach Greg Adams did take all his videos from his channel demonetized. Yeah, well, Coach Greg Adams is a fucking moron. I know you're not supposed to talk about other people, but he doesn't know what he's talking about. He just runs his mouth. And he generally hoodwinks his audience by pandering to them. I have no respect for it. And I'm not afraid to let people know. It's not like I'm cut. Oh my God, you'll never be able to collab with them in the future. I am heartbroken. Dude, I'd rather play Minecraft. By the way, something you guys don't know, if you guys don't know, I have a second channel, Digital Ryan. Uh, let me put the link in here. We talk about this stuff and we're fairly casual. Hey, what's going on, Mish? We're fairly casual about it. It's just like Minecraft or games or whatever. Something that's nice and fun, a little bit of entertainment, but we'll hit these topics and we'll talk a little more on the personal level. Come on in, give it a sub, join in. Uh, we just started up a contest and we're gonna have on the on the, on the the server, base building. Whoever builds the most beautiful base, we're all gonna vote on it. They're gonna get some, some free merch. Oh yeah, bunch of inside jokes. It's basically fun. Don't take this shit too seriously. I kind of, as a counter to the guys with Lamborghinis and cigars posting about their fax stacks, I'm like, here, I can red pill better than all you guys, and I'm just going to play electronic Legos. Again, it's a backdrop to these kind of conversations. Think of it like a mids watch, but something different in the background. Anyways. What was I going on with there? Oh, all right, the incel thing. So they decided something new was called a quarantine. And they just wanted the quarantine to happen. There was like a process to get the quarantine lifted, but they've never responded on any official channels. They don't follow their procedures. It was very clear they just wanted to do this. So what does a quarantine do? Quarantine sucks because you cannot Google search it. It removes it from the robots, the robot text. That's something that Google used to uh, scrap a page to see what kind of stuff they could talk about. So if you ever do a Google search for the red pill subreddit, it's not gonna come up. Uh, nobody's posts will come up. If you do like a search on Reddit, unless you specifically search the red pilled subreddit, none of their posts come up. If uh, the posts will never make it to all, if you sign up to Reddit and add that subreddit, you're forced to add an email address to it, which a lot of people don't want to do. And it adds that extra barrier to get entry. So it closes off a lot of people's access. And it's, it's slowly been dripping ever since. And it's got to the point now where a bunch of black pill dudes are talking about women in the abstract in there with the very, very rarely endorsed contributor giving something fairly useful on there.
Well, that's a good question. Can a Patreon sub join the server without joining the channel? Unfortunately, no. Well, I mean, you can join the channel. There's nothing stopping you with that. But if you want to join the SMP, because it's not it's not for making money. It charges enough to cover uh, the YouTube's costs and the server hosting costs. There's like a limited space. It's only got enough room for about 100 people. So yeah, that it's a separate thing. So the Patreon's separate. Having said that, what you can do, if you want to save yourself a couple bucks, D, is I've made three tiers of membership in there. Because I know a lot of people hate Patreon. So I'm like, fine. I made a third tier, which will get you the SMP and the Patreon. And it ends up being cheaper than if you were to do both individually. So you can go that route if you want to. <laughs> Mainly go to Reddit for all the tits. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing how much, like massive amounts of porn are on reddit massive amounts they can't have guys talk about getting laid but they can have girls sucking dick <laughs> fucking thousands of it every day <laughs> who'd have thunk so this thing had an effect is basically closing off the spigot uh nobody else was joining it kind of slowly trailed off they created the trp.red thing here to which the married red pill guys, and again, wine more please and red pill school, they always have their little bicker fests where um, red pill school's like, yeah, guys, come on, join TRP Red. It'll be fun. Get all your stuff. Bring all your audience here. And wine more please is like, no, no, piss off. And he goes, but the Reddit's going to come and ban you. He goes, you guys have been talking about being banned for eight years, yet we're all still here. So whatever. But a lot of us on second thought were like, you know what? It's good to have it as a backup. We're like, yeah, sure. Back up all our stuff and we'll make a, we'll make a place for it in the trp.red thing. And if something happens, then at least we have a home to go to. Here's the problem with that. One of the big reasons that the, uh, that the quarantine happened was because it was marginally attached to this subreddit called the Donald. Basically a Donald Trump like cheerleader site. And they did a whole bunch of anti-TOS stuff. Basically pretty shitty people. One of the guys there was also a common poster on the Red Pill. He goes by the nomenclature Galu Voil. His name's Daniel, so let's call him Daniel. So he kind of acted very, very maliciously on that site. Got that one banned. And then everybody that was surrounding it and attached to it also got their quarantine. So he kind of caused it. Then he decided, well, I don't like the married red pill guys. And I don't like all you guys. I want to be the king of this mountain. And so he essentially just filled the entire place with like standard 4chan, like Nazi propaganda shit. And everybody, and he basically turned off anybody who was useful or uh, a good poster. All the, all the good quality people scared all off. So now he got to be the king of the mountain because he scared everybody else off. And he's the only one that's left. Very annoying. Then... He's like, well, I don't like this anymore. Nobody's, nobody's, nobody's giving me accolades. So he just left. So he kind of fucked it over. And this is where the topic is. Like, we are our own worst enemies. It turns out it wasn't feminists that ruined the red pill. It wasn't MRAs. It wasn't women. It wasn't courts. It wasn't anything. It was guys in the red pill who treated it as a validation funnel. Ass models of Instagram, they call it. The only reason those guys were there is because they want likes. They actually make legitimate brags like uh i make reddit posts once a month what do you do with your life it's like what the fuck is wrong with these people yeah that's what bands are for went low iq tribalist never go low iq tribalist absolutely so it's 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 kind of annoying but then it kind of gave, got me to realize and this was right around the same time as if you guys i'm not going to go into that story but like the whole 21 convention and the dust up and harassing Rolo's kids and shit like that. So I won't go into that, but it's the same same concept is that there is a contingent of guys who think of the red pill as a clubhouse and they like to join because they want to be the coolest guy in the clubhouse. <laughs> yeah. And then when they don't get it, they basically ruin the space for everybody. It's it's total gamma male stuff, narcissistic behavior very antisocial so always beware and this will help for you guys if anything you're doing if you're making a D, D club on the weekends if you're making a minecraft server whatever as soon as you get that guy that's there for validation above like a common goal and enjoyment just know he's the reason that you think it's going to turn to shit someday 
Yeah, maybe I'll do that, Fox. Make a make the red morning day one day a Minecraft day where we talk about this stuff. I don't know if I'm prepared to cross the channels like that yet, though. <laughs> now I don't know if I'm sure prepared to do that one yet, but we'll get there. So this leads to, where is it? Oh, perfect timing. 60 minutes. Collaborations. Why we can't all just get along. Men are not made to get along. Uh, Tanner Guzzi asked this question to Rolo a long time ago. Donovan and Bulldog Mindset. I'm sure you've seen those guys. They do this too. Why can't the sphere just get along? Why can't they just... Why can't we just get together? We're letting the feminists win and shit like this. And I'm just like, this is the stupidest idea ever. You take a, a concept known as the red pill, which is like your mental point of origin. Build a healthy level of uh, of self-confidence, of narcissism, of, of like, basically you're the man. Nobody else can tell you shit. You have to get there. Especially guys who just become red pilled go way overboard. They become the cockiest son of a bitches on the earth. But that's the point. In the same way that narcissism is the male disorder, healthy levels of narcissism, which is like 5 out of 10 instead of 8 out of 10, basically, kind of make you hard, not as collaborative. So you tell guys to be their own mental point of origin, but then you tell them to, hey, join me in my man club, and then sit here and collaborate together. It's just not a realistic, it's not a realistic thing to do. Having said that, I do notice it's always the guys who act the worst, who once they start seeing the consequences of their behavior, start saying, oh, well, why can't we just collaborate and get together and get along? It's like, well, you first, man. Try not acting like a dick for four years. Again, this is just some internet drama. Nobody gives a shit. But this matters for you, too. Like, I guarantee you, as a kid, as a teenager, as a college student, even as a young adult, you've all had that friend. You have that friend that uh, takes liberties, takes advantage, acts super selfish, and then as soon as things aren't going his way, appeals to your better nature. You don't want that. As much as Rolo red-pilled us to women, uh, the red-pilled space is red-pilling him to men. And it turns out we're fucking trash. <laughs> Absolute trash. But we don't have to be. And that's the worst part. But hey, if you want to go collaborate with somebody... What I would suggest, you know, co-worker, new job, see how they treat the people around them that they don't need anything from. And it's weird that I'm saying this because it's like, that's a strategy for women, isn't it? See how she treats the waiter. See how a girl treats somebody who she doesn't want anything from. It's like, yeah, treat men the same way you treat women until shown otherwise. Because most men are being raised and act like defective women. A bunch of bitches. Absolutely. That's fine. You can make the case that testosterone's down and this and that. I'm not going to go there. I just know if I treat a lot of them like women, things become more clear. Things become more clear. So it turns out, yeah, for all intents and purposes, most men you meet are chicks. Chicks without the nice smell. And they don't shower every day, as my good buddy Pat Stedman put it. <laughs> Rest in peace, by the way. I hope he avoids a prison sentence, but I'm pretty sure he won't. Yeah, no good deed goes unpunished. So yeah, absolutely. Altruism is... And if the recent quarantine, COVID restrictions, supply chain issues have taught you anything, is that altruism right now is not going to work. If you're in... And this is like a game theory thing. If you're in a game where everybody's cheating and you're the only honest player, you're going to get rolled over. The only way that works is if you join them as a cheater. Because yes, it's all better if you all act cooperative. But as soon as you have a certain amount of cheaters, it becomes impossible to do that strategy. So the second best strategy is get yours, get out. Oh, Misa, that's a good point here. Anybody who thinks chicks are cleaned haven't lived with one yet. Absolutely, dude. If you doubt, go find a bouncer friend of yours. Go talk to him about what the girl's bathroom looks like. And he's like way worse than the guy's bathroom. They are filthy, filthy animals. <laughs> filthy creatures. I can't believe it. You guys are killing me. Absolutely hilarious. <laughs> so yeah, like uh that's the beauty of 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 game is that it's not everybody's like, "Oh, it's just about picking up chicks." And yeah, at first it is cuz most guys when they come here it's from sexual dissatisfaction. 
but that's not it. No, I'm not doing I'm doing full wine more, please. By the way, I gave you a shout out back to you. Remember that fight you had with uh, Red Pill School over him wanting to collab and take over the Red or the married Red Pill sub and that Hunter Drew post there? I figured you'd have a good laugh over that because I always, I always got a chuckle out of it. Rule Zero Dad reminded him of yesterday and I thought, well, we should bring that one up. Pretend Philosopher. I actually kind of like that name you got going on there. Anyways, um, where was I going with this one? Oh, yeah, uh, the, the get laid thing. And then you kind of realize, and this is why more please huge fan of this. He calls it inner game. It's an old pickup term, but a lot of guys learned. Okay, so I learned game, maybe to sleep with my wife, maybe to sleep with a girlfriend, maybe to sleep with a plate, whatever. Then they realized, oh, my God, this stuff kind of plays up. Like, I'm negotiating a raise with my boss, and I talk with him with assertiveness, and all that stuff that I did to not kowtow to my wife. Hey, got a raise. Like, it was it was amazing, man. And my time there, everybody, and I mean, like, everybody, after their first year, started gaining, like, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100% more than they were earning before, just from assertiveness. Just for that way to stand up to your wife and tell her to, tell her to shut up. It's amazing. It helped me out in the boss, too. So, I was like, oh, that's kind of neat. That's awesome. Bogey D6, he started the same week as me. He ended up doing some amazing stuff. I remember he had a story once about, like, it just makes you a better person. Like, case in point, just his leading his family and his family trusting his leadership. He was in the Texas floods back when those happened. And he actually, like, commandeered a lot of his company's equipment and started the, uh, what do they call them? The Texas Navy. The guys that were floating around from house to house to house picking people up. It's an absolute amazing thing. Oh, yeah, why not, please? I saw you deleted your account, which thankfully, thank God, because now it's going to be twice as hard now to find your stuff. Because I used to be able to find it through your new username, but now your new username is gone, your old username is gone, and I have to, like, remember the keywords for all of your damn posts, you son of a bitch. <laughs> um, all right, back on topic here. So what are we at? Collaborations. Yeah, collaborations don't work with guys. With guys, the way to collaborate is to make it in their best interest. It's the only way it works. So if you want to collaborate with somebody on a job or a work thing, yeah, they might like you. And that enjoyability will earn you some favor. You can work with people because they like working with you and they know they can trust you. But for the most part, a guy's loyalty can be bought. I'll give you money. You collaborate with me. We'll have fun. I'll give you my audience. You give me your audience. Shit like that. If you're having to come to somebody with altruism, or appeals to being a better man or a real man. Oh, that's good then. Oh, red absolutely does suck. Yeah, I kind of went over on that one too. Well, that's good then. How funny is that? It's like uh, the ultimate irony is that uh, at the end of the day, all of your old stuff for, for like posterity has been archived by the one guy that you wouldn't piss on if he was on fire. <laughs> Oh, that makes me laugh. So yeah, that should show you then collaborations, right? He just wanted to have uh, his own collection of stuff. Anyways, from Jamie Harubi here. I like this one. Best sex in a 22 marriage was on the night I treated her the worst that day in our whole marriage. Nobody teaches that traditional con fill. Damn them women. Yeah. I think a lot of guys think it's like treating somebody well is good. Ultimately, unconditionally. It's not the case. Sometimes treating people bad is good, which makes no sense. It's counterintuitive, but yeah, there's a, there's a method to it because it's not boring. Somebody gets treated like shit, they get mad. When they get mad, they get horny. <laughs> Ryan is the only one with his own audience. I wouldn't watch MLD if you paid me. Ouch. <laughs> well, Brett, <laughs> I can't say I can't say I disagree with you. I mean, I'm glad you're here anyway. Yeah, a little bit of that anger. Because anger is an emotion. Strong emotion is all that matters. Not positive or negative. Yeah, Mish noticed the same thing. Once he started being an asshole, life changed. It's just... But, and I don't want to say just like be an asshole and life will get better for you. Because that's kind of like a, a crude way of describing it. When a lot of guys think asshole, they think, well, maybe I'll just act as antisocial as possible. Piss as many people off. Like, just be contrarian for the sake of it. It's like, that's not being an asshole. An asshole is just being assertive without treating other people's feelings as sacrosanct. 
I think it's the easiest way I can put it. Case in point. You do something because you wanted to do it. Either there was a good reason for it, maybe it was just a whim, but you're aware that's going to piss your girl off, but you don't care. It's the price you have to pay. I took it into consideration, and that's the way it is. Women have a much easier time dealing with that than they would... Oh, I didn't even think... I didn't know this would bug you. They'd rather be treated like crap than not be thought of at all. Having said that, I'm not saying make your whole life treated like crap. Obviously, you treat people good. But just be aware. A little side of an asshole. You'd be surprised how well it pays off. And it's mostly like a... Uh, uh, what's the word for it? And that's mostly because of... Desensitization. Thank you. Desensitization. So let's say strong emotions work. Good emotions and bad emotions. So you do a good thing. You rub her back. Do another good thing. Buy her flowers. Do another good thing. You pay her rent. Uh, for the Discord, uh, one of the guys here will throw you a link there. Here's the problem. Every one of those good things you do eventually becomes normalized. Well, he always rubs my back. <laughs> nice uh, always rubs my back so now rubbing your back is no longer a positive emotion that's just a neutral emotion well the flowers oh it gets me flowers every month so buying flowers is a neutral event now it gets to the point that like in order to keep the positive emotions you have to be doing more and more and more and more there was a post old post making a parable about uh, Sumerian Empire or something like that and the man conquered the world did everything you could need to do put everything and his wife just stood out there in the balcony looked over the vast expanse he goes that's it it's like you're never going to feed that bottomless pit of wants and positive so what do you do about that and that's where the negative stuff comes in that's where being an asshole comes in negative kind of resets it so yeah buy your flowers one day yell at her the next it's a crude example but you get what I'm saying here so you never know what's coming. You just know it's always going to be exciting. That's awesome. So that way, when you do good things, they're always seen as good things. On top of that, it also helps guys understand what they think is a good behavior or is a good thing may not necessarily be a good thing. I find this happens way too often where guys will sit around and learn red pill, and they learn the assertiveness stuff, and they act like you would say they act like an asshole. And then it works great. Their wives start responding better. They start, you know, cooking. They start having more sex. And the guy's like, this is great. Thanks, Red Pill. You saved my marriage. I'm going to start rewarding her good behavior because she's been on her best behavior for like three weeks now. And then what do they do? Well, they start doing what they thought was good behavior and all the stuff that they did back when they weren't getting any, when their wife treated them like shit. And, I don't, and then you'll get them back in like a month. They're like, I don't get it. Everything was going perfectly. Then all of a sudden she stopped. What happened? Like, well, what happened? And then the guy was like, yeah, well, I was doing all this stuff. I was doing this, assertiveness, this, you know, alpha stuff, this. She started acting better, so I started rewarding good behavior. That's right, right? Reward good behavior, don't reward bad behavior. It's like, well, how'd you reward it? And they basically described, I went back to the way I used to be, because that made me feel good. And I'm like, oh. For f so th let me get this straight. You changed your behavior. It got a good reaction. And your response to that was to reward that by stop using the good behavior what it's like yeah here's the problem with that too it creates what's called a uh, cycle oh sec i want to make this its own point cycle of unattractiveness Cycle of unattractiveness. So you you act like you said, like an asshole. You act more attractive. You last act like unattractive, and things start to go well. So then you stop doing that anymore because you want to reward her by acting like you know, a little bitch, codependent. Start giving her more things. She starts getting frustrated with that, and then the attraction goes away. It's not girls doing it on purpose. They're just following their emotions. But that little bit of trust gets erode, eroded. So then you start it up again. All right, I'm going to be more of an asshole. I'm going to do it again. And guys do it for all kinds of reasons. Sometimes it's literally that. They just don't realize the behavior they're doing. Other times, guys do it on purpose as a measure of self-sabotage. So for example, when their girl's acting really bitchy, when that divorce is right around the corner, when like you're sexually frustrated, a lot of guys get angry. The 
anger phase. The anger phase is a great motivational tool. And they use it and they fix everything up and then they don't get angry anymore and then they stop acting that way. It becomes less attractive. But the beauty of it is they're like, well, if I can just get her angry again, and this is a subliminal thing, if I just get her angry again, then I'll get angry and then I'll go back to my good behavior. So they basically start cycling this stuff. And like I said before, after the next cycle, there's that little bit of trust erosion where it's like, is this a real signal or is this another fake one that's going to last for like two weeks this time? And so you end up having to be more of an asshole to get the same effect. It's that desensitization again. Instead of just being consistent and attractive with your behavior, guys keep treating this like a stupid parlor trick. And then they're wondering, well, now I have to like choke her in bed in order to get anything from her. What the hell? It's like, well, had you just kept stuck to your guns with assertiveness right at the start, she would have trust. And so those occasional times where you'd slip up and do something goofy, she would just like blow it off. Instead, you had to go from one extreme to the other extreme, then back to the first extreme, then back to the second extreme. And the whole time, your girl's just eroding her trust slowly but surely over your ability to lead, your ability to be attractive. And then you're wondering why your life's in a complete, you know, shit show right now. And that's the cycle of unattractiveness. Yeah, the anger face, anger face. And really, it's because guys treat it like a parlor trick. Again, it's not about tips and tricks to sleep with a girl. It's about fundamental changes you need to make in your life to become a more attractive person. Well, that's not who I am. That's not the real me. Shut up. Good stuff. Is that a premiere? No, this one's live. We're live. I only premiere the Mids Watches ones, and I've kind of stopped doing that lately because, yeah, well, it's like, meh, doesn't seem to make a difference. Yeah, and it is horrible, but it's the thing too. Like to describe it to you guys, it takes a few minutes. But to see a guy's field reports go this direction, you're watching like six, seven, eight months of a guy's life just going to shit. And it's always the same thing. Everything's going great. Thanks, guys. Don't need you anymore. Next post is, oh my God, I can't believe she did this. It's all reactive. It's all like she, 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 she did this. How do I fix this? Treating a girl like a Swiss watch. It's, I would say it's the quintessential definition of purple pill, using red pill tools for blue pill goals. And the reason it doesn't work is because, again, it erodes your trust. It creates an unhappy and uh, dysfunctional relationship cycle, and it never ends anywhere good. This is where most guys end up with like the, uh, speaking of how crappy Reddit is, they had like five anti-red pill subreddits. There was the blue pill, there was punching Morpheus, there was uh, purple pill debate, all of them. And it always ends up, or X red pill. So all these guys ended up just posting in there, well, I went to red pill and it completely ruined my marriage. I'm so glad I'm out of there. It's like, talk about not being able to take responsibility for your own choices, you hobo. You stupid incel hobo. You did stupid things. You didn't calibrate your decisions. You didn't fundamentally change who you were. You had a horrible, needy, covert contract and it blew up in your face. So naturally, it has to be everybody else's fault because it couldn't be yours. All the actions and choices and decisions you made and all the things you said can't be your fault, so it must be ours. Again, just chicked attitude, man. I've got to read more real-world examples. I need to see some application that isn't just calling her a bitch randomly. Extremes are too easily and lately and lazy. Well, luckily for you, that's the entirety of my channel is real-world examples. <laughs> the Mids Watch alone, we're up to like 30 of them. The Relationship Breakdowns, another 50 of those. But I would suggest, yeah... Real world examples on your own is probably the best way to do it. <laughs> I wish Ryan would tell more people to shut up and stop thinking masculinity is a trick. Have you been on my Twitter? That's all I do. It's at the point now where I'm like, I got to throw in some like pablum about positivity. Cause I'm like, I must sound like a horrible, miserable whole curmudgeon. <laughs> yeah. Incel hobo sounds like an indie band. It probably is an indie band. And now, so back to the uh, the cycle of unattractiveness. So to finish this one off, it's kind of funny because a lot of guys treat it like uh, it's our fault. And that's a very feminine way of looking at it. External blame, internal success, right? So what's the solution that some guys have to it? And a lot of guys, again, they approach it like women. They're like, well, we should teach to the lowest common denominator. You're saying have a rational confidence, but we should have a long lengthy diatribe about how not to screw this up don't eat paint if you guys don't remember in the 50s <laughs> if you remember in the 50s they used to have lead paint and then kids used to eat the paint because it tasted sweet 
But then the problem was it gives brain damage and those guys get hyper aggressive. Same thing with lead in the paint. So they used to have to put warning labels on things. Paint, don't eat. I call them don't eat paint warnings. Military did that. Always teach to the lowest common denominator. And I'm like, no, fuck that. You need to treat guys like adults. You need to let them fail or succeed by their own merits. You can't coddle guys. First off, you can't take responsibility for them. So let's say, let's say this guy's a complete idiot. Let's say he's got a, a wolf name on his pen name and he's gonna be the most alpha guy that ever alphed or ever alphaed. Are you gonna tell him about uh, men and women can't love each other, about the concepts of alpha, the concept of beta, and you're gonna waste 10 times the amount of time that you would have wasted by giving him all the different ways not to screw it up and not to misunderstand it. First off, that's 10 different guys you could have done something with that you can't now because you're wasting it coddling this moron. Secondly, and this is what I've found from every personal experience or professional experience or even secondhand experience. If the guy is going to screw something up, there is nothing you can do to stop him. You can give him safety. You could give him a padded room with no sharp objects. You can tell him everything he needs to know in every conceivable way he will screw it up. He will still go out of his way to screw it up. Let them burn. If you're giving a guy advice, you're not actually trying to help him. You're like a consultant. You're giving him information. If he chooses to use it, that's on him. Anything else is a covert contract and will just build resentment inside of you. In fact, most of the time, it's not even that you're giving other people information. What you're doing is articulating something for yourself so you can learn from it. This is what the Ask Married Red Pill separate what is all about. Too many retards were coming into, uh, into the Married Red Pill with their stupid questions. Hey, English isn't my first language. How can she slap? And you're just like, fuck off. So the decision was we either block and ban a lot of these people or we give them a retard sandbox. We gave them the retard sandbox. That's Ask Married Red Pill. And it's fun fact, a lot of guys go in there, they ask their questions and they're just one and done. I'll ask a question. I won't get the answer I want. I'll fight with everybody. You'll never see me again. Some guys do stick around, but the answer is never, or the point of it is never to help the guy asking the question. The point is for a lot of the guys in the married red pill, some guys are switched on and know what they're doing. Some guys are kind of figuring it out and they're kind of learning some concepts. It's for them to talk to him when they're really just articulating their own thoughts inside their head to make things make sense. They're actually helping themselves. It's a neat little trick that we pulled. Get these get these guys who are absolute losers, who are gonna be losers, and it's like, you tell them how to how to do effort. Like if you want people to pay attention to you one-on-one, -on -one, there's an own your shit thing. There's Patreon for me, there's all kinds of ways you could do it, but instead they come to this place because they want everybody's sole attention to stop and pay attention to them. It's like, fine, so if you're gonna be a retard, Let's at least get, let's at least squeeze some blood out of this stone, you know? Yeah, and even if you could stop them, you'd rob them of the learning experience they need. Yeah, again, that's, that. well, it's not, you're not wrong. But again, it's too much altruism, I find. Yeah, let them die, they're going to die anyway. I'm sure, and I, I know you've heard us say, don't red pill your friends. And I know all of you guys have tried it. Hey, there was a friend of mine, he was fat, and his wife was treating him like shit, and I just started unloading all this stuff that would fix his life and then he called me an asshole and told my wife and now there's a big fight now we're not allowed over for christmas like don't red pill your friends they don't want to be saved bro it's like that slutty girl she doesn't want to be saved same thing as your unattractive friend he just wants to be told everything's okay and it's not his fault all right i got the dog sleeping on me while i do this so it's actually kind of adorable i kind of like these off-camera ones so one 23 zero zero Last topic, thirst is the worst. Thirst is the worst. Thirst is bad in business. Thirst is bad in, I should almost read, actually, where's my goddamn book? I love this, I'm gonna read this part out here. One sec. Don't worry, buddy. I'm gonna come back to hold you. It's like the last chapter in the book. There we go. Don't worry, Chomsky, you can go back to bed now. Thirst is the worst. Where is this? No, we aren't having sex tonight. Blah, blah, blah. Get out of here. There it is. Chapter 15, section 3. Thirst is the worst. <laughs> what are you doing, man? 
Sorry, the dog's hitting the pages right now because he wants me to pay attention to him. Yeah, never go out with a thirsty man. Never do business with a thirsty man. Never trust your sister around a thirsty man. You cannot trust that he wants anyone else to succeed, and by definition, he won't either. Give him a whiff of that good life, and he doesn't know what to do with it in the same way that if you offer a starving man half a sandwich, he'll hit you with a brick and take the whole damn thing. Don't trust thirst. Thirst is the worst. Thirsty people are ego invested in their thirst because it's not their fault. It's not my fault the girls won't sleep with me. I just have my standards are too high. It's not my fault. They're just shallow. It's just they're, they're slutty. They're broken women. They're damaged. Blah, blah, blah. So if you start telling them, hey, it is your fault, but it can be fixed, what you're basically telling guys, everything you've built up about your self-identity is wrong. And at that point, you might as well just call them a dick. Because <laughs> those are fighting words. Luckily, guys who fuck up and fail so much probably don't like to fight either. Thirst is the worst. Don't help your friend. If he's thirsty, let him be thirsty. There's kind of a second part to it too, which I never addressed. Uh, for a lot of guys, the biggest, the biggest proselytizers are always the white belts. If you know karate, that's always the reference I make. If you, if you want to talk to about people about karate, it's the white belts who won't shut up about it. Black belts don't talk about karate. Real red pill guys don't talk to their friends about being red pill. They don't care. Be the example. That's the problem with the white belt. He starts talking about karate. It looks like it's a ridiculous art. I don't get it. You can't even hurt anybody with this. You can't even kick properly. Karate guys are horrible. That's exactly what's happening with the red pill. Any large organization or uh, collection of people will always be judged by its worst members. I was part of the military. Ask, ask me how I know. <laughs> so you keep in mind... Chances are, if you want to start bragging to everybody about what this stuff is, you're probably not very good at uh, living it. So fix that. Be the example. What you do will communicate way more strongly than what you say. And this is the only thing I've seen that ever works is, you know, turn your marriage around. Turn your relationships around. Start getting better sex, more sex, doing better professionally. And then the people around you will see you growing and growing past them. Some will get resentful. And let's start being catty about it. You kind of know those aren't really friends. They're just fair weather friends. They're commiserators and you kind of let them go. Other people, the ones who are switched on and worth a damn, will do something like, hey, how'd you do that? How'd you do that? And just give them a little bit. Oh, it's it's not that hard. It's just, you know, you mentioned like something you saw off this guy. Ah, I read this book. I don't really agree with it too much, but it was kind of neat. It's called Fuck Files or it's called Rational Male or it's called Practical Female Psychology. Yeah. If you want, let me know. I'll lend you a copy. You can check it out. Maybe, maybe, maybe it'll work for you. Who knows? And that's it. And then if the guy invests, he's like, yeah, I'll take the book. Now assume he's not going to read it. But if he does read it and he gives it back, he's like, thanks, man. Read through that. It was pretty good. You look for those signs of investment. If he wants to invest, then you can invest back in him. But he has to take the initiative on it. It's the same thing. And it's like I told you guys before about how... Uh, you come here to learn how to get laid and you leave with like sex self-actualization. Turns out that's the exact same strategy you use when a wife cheats on you and you're considering taking her back. It's a great, it's an article from Chump Lady I bring up where it's uh, infidelity is a big deal. Here's how you decide if you take them back. And then the first thing is honesty. Are they honest about it or are they doing trickle truth? You know, like admitting the bare minimum to get out of the trouble. And this is the way to tell whether they actually do feel bad and they do want to make it up to you or they just feel bad that they got caught. Next one is patience. You got to realize that uh, if, you've, if you've betrayed somebody's trust, then you have to be patient and do it on their timeline, not yours. Just telling them to get over it is a sure sign it's not a sincere one. And this is the one that's important for red-pilled guys if you're red-pilling your friends. Initiative. Are they booking their own appointments to the marriage counselor? Are they booking their own hospital appointments? Are they making an effort on their end to show you that they've changed. Same with your friends. If you send him a copy of Rational Mail, well, if he's not reading it, then you're wasting your time. You're wasting your time. So when you give it to him, give it to him with the expectation that he's never going to read it, because then if he does read it, then you can invest. But until then, yeah, don't even try. Oh, that's funny. Coworker, wait a minute. This sounds familiar. Have you heard of Rational Mail? <laughs> That's too funny. 
Yeah, this channel's like the black belt red pill. And to be fair, D Digital, that's a it's a good thing and a bad thing. It's good in that I probably go more in depth to this stuff than anybody else out there. I'm very proud of this. I actually have like a, a, a plan for how this content's going over the next two years here. So far, we're right on schedule, which is great. Here's the problem with that. From a marketing perspective, this is great for guys. Once you're here, oh, this is great. This is something new. This is something new. This is something I didn't know. This is something in depth. This is great. For somebody who's brand new though, what they need is repetition. Like, I should still be talking about no more Mr. Nice Guy and, like, nice guy behaviors. I should be three years just rambling those same four talking points. That's how you get new people. So I always joke around saying this channel should be bigger. This channel could be bigger. It's critically undervalued. It's almost, it's pretty much a choice. The idea is I want to get everything here into one place. And in doing that, you kind of alienate and you make it a little more, like, uh, what's the word? Not transparent, opaque, opaque to new guys, which is fine. Yeah, when men call you a misogynist, you know your masculine friends are pussies. They use feminine shaming language. To be fair, Tax, I have never had a man in real life use the word misogynist in any context. My wife said it once to bug me. I just kind of laughed that off. I told her to stop using this unattractive jargon. You sound like an incel. <laughs> but yeah, why would you bring it up? Look, just play coy. Like, I use a good example right now. And I'm going to end the show on this. The Canadian Forces currently has two class action lawsuits going against you. Oh, paused on this one then. Rumblefish, thank you very much, sir, for the $10 super chat. I've concluded that if you're new to the Married Red Pill... Don't trust your choices and quick fix ideas until you've suffered from discomfort first. Gym from a month, map for a month, boundary enforcement. Absolutely, dude. That discomfort is 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 necessary because that lets you know you're you're hitting uncharted ground. If you're not uncomfortable, you're doing the shit you always used to do and you're going to get the same result. Thank you very much though for the $10 super chat on this one. Uh rule 0 today, I guess it's Paul. It's going to be kind of fun. I'll get cleaned up and I'll probably go on cam for that one though. Uh, oh, right. The forces. So two class action lawsuits. First one, they called it, there's apparently some kind of LGBTQ plus purge. And they're trying to get a class action for that. The second one is anybody who's had any type of sexual um, misconduct in the forces. Fun fact, 80,000 people in the forces, 11,000 claimants. It's just insane. Now, I I was in the military for a good 12 years. Hearing the stat, one out of eight people suffered from sexual misconduct. Look, I got my problems with the military same as anybody, but come on. If that was happening so frequently, my mess had 15 people in it. That means two of us would have been diddled in there. <laughs> Didn't happen. But... There's payouts for this. It's a class action, right? So everybody gets paid, and now everybody's like, you know what? Think what you like. Just behave like others. If there's an action lawsuit here, and you fit the criteria by the policy, just go in there and do your thing. It's something we used to do in the military, too. Like, uh, for example, medical releases. Turns out you can get medical releases for, like, a peanut allergy or uh, psori uh, psori psoriasis. And there's a pro and it's like generally you can live with this stuff. It's not a big deal. You just don't eat peanuts and you don't do the thing. But you know, by the medical things here, as long as you properly go and get yourself tested, it'll show on paper that you've done this. You've met the polity for exclusivity of service, and then you get out on a medical pension. You get a payment for it, a tax-free payment. Holy cow! A lot of guys were essentially like, yeah, I could live with this, but I don't like this organization anymore. And so you just fill the criteria. It's not the noble man thing. You're supposed to suck it up, right? And, well, put up with it so you guys can go employ. And there's been parts of the chain of command that'll ask you. It's like, hey, if you just drop this right now, we'll put you on deployment like you want. But yeah, no, no, follow through with it. That's that example. Don't red pill your friends. Everybody's talking about like woke is crap and you need to be a real man. Sure. But uh, if woke is paying 10 grand, fucking go woke. Go woke, get paid. And you know what? If the organization you're with, whether it's the military or somebody else, decides to play this stupid game, play it by their rules, they're going to lose. You kind of need to let them suffer in order to learn. 
So if your company does the go woke, go broke thing, and you can get like a settlement out of it because somebody's suing the company and you want to join in that lawsuit, even though you're like, ah, I don't think they're guilty of it. But well, they brought all this woke crap into the business. And so maybe they need to have a couple hundred million dollar lawsuits thrown at them for them to learn their lesson. You're doing your part. Plus you're getting paid. Selfish interests. Rational self-egoism. I'm not telling you to sue your employer, but I'm saying if somebody else is and they want you to help, well, as long as you get paid. Anyways, I'll end it off on that somber note. Don't forget Paul's channel in about uh, half an hour, 40 minutes. I'll catch you guys there. Cheers.